but not before turning to you and showing you what he keeps gushing about. <gasps> oh my. I like it. Isn't it adorable? The claw takes hold of the plush. Your eyes widen as you cross your fingers, hoping it catches it. But you were interrupted with a sudden smack to your ass. What the fuck? What? <laughs> Before you could retaliate with a question, his gaze softened, taking you a bit aback as he looks down at, on the pavement below, kicking a pebble. Have you ever liked someone? No. Hello my loves, I'm Degenerate and welcome back to the kid at the back. It has updated for us today, as of today because I'm playing it on the day it came out. Yeah. It is day two. I don't know what it's called. Alrighty then. This is now, this is the start of day two I'm guessing. I'm gonna, god. <laughs> I'm gonna put it right Oh god. <laughs> Here. Yes. Let us begin now, because I had to like do the whole day one again, because I couldn't just easily skip through. Alrighty. I did the coffee thing. That's- I think it might be different, depending on how you end it. I don't even know, but I did- I went to the library, I gave him coffee in exchange for the seat. That's what I did. And this maiden, she lived with no other thought. There was literally nothing before this. Then to love and be loved by me. The one who loves. I was a child. She was a child. In this kingdom by the sea. I actually forgot what this one was called. Oh, never mind. It's day two, the kingdom. The sun setting by the horizon colors, the grassy field with a deep golden orange. As the wind made some strands of hair brush across your face. Your ever beloved home. The tall grass, the fresh air. The various farm animals that you and your family raised since you were but a mere child. You can't even imagine what was happening before you right now as a group of people came while they talked with their father with your father. Your only family member left. Nice. You see the distress in your father's eyes as he tries to belt no. Tries his best to negotiate with the people before him. The desperation in his voice, the sweat running down his neck as he moves around his hand, gesturing this and that. Father, please just give me more time. I promise I can pay up. This is all we have left. I don't know where else to go if we lose this farmland. Question mark, question mark, question mark. We've given you enough chances already, Mr. De Mr. Generate. <laughs> if you don't pay up your debt, we will take your land. Oh no. The loud ringing of the school bell rang across the hallway, making you jerk out of your thoughts. Students came out through their classroom doors. You feel someone shaking you awake. Hello. You sat up and met face to face with Crow. Well, good morning, Sleeping Beauty. Very interesting choice of words. You let out a yawn. You rubbed your eyes as you looked around. Your fellow classmates are now gone from their seats. As it is now lunchtime, as per usual, what did I miss? Nothing important, though if you're having doubts, I can lend you my notes afterwards. Thanks, girl. You're a lifesaver. Anything for you. <laughs> <laughs> you recalled the little dream you had. You quickly shake it off as you let out a stretch. Popping a few joints before you got up and went out of your classroom with Crow in tow. Crow in tow. <laughs> you met up with your group of friends seeing Daryl and Geo and Crow. No, seeing Daryl with Geo and Crow. Waiting by the lockers. Brittany coming along behind them and Jess. You waved them. Hello, my colorful group of friends. Good noon to you all. Daryl. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Regards, Daryl. I was class. Boring and boring. So glad to be out of there. One more useless minor and I'll have... And I'll be out of here. Okay. <laughs> Dio just shrugged. A hand in his hoodie pocket. 
while the other on his phone. We got to at least do something in our major today, though, which I'm glad about. More papers, but it was at least something. Enough about papers, so what about the Halloween party? Any ideas for a costume yet? Do I actually get to choose? As they talked with each other at the corner of your eye, you noticed a familiar figure. Nice. It was Sol. He came out of the classroom. Another person came afterwards behind him. Oh, we did the route before that didn't involve him, so we don't know who it is. Yeah. Seemingly bored of his mind. Join Sol. Call Sol. Stay with the group. We're just gonna go. I'm not calling him over here. You don't know these people. I would never do that to someone. That is awful. Oh, um, Crow, is it okay if I leave? I have somewhere to be at. Mm -hmm. Is it so? Yes. There was a slight disappointment in his voice, but he lets you continue on. Yes, yeah, sorry I couldn't hang out. Nonsense, I'll see you after lunch instead. If ever you're interested, of course. Why do you speak that way? <laughs> okay, he's asking. Okay. Of course. Totally. If I'm not super engrossed in better things. You give Crow one last smile before you before going over to where Sol is. You walk towards the two individuals. They seem to be deep in conversation. However, Sol noticed your presence and stopped talking. His attention now on you. His companion noticed the change in Sol's demeanor and followed his gaze as it landed on you. The shorter male greeted you with a smile. Hello. Hi there, you're friends with Sunny. Huh? Sunny? Sunny? <laughs> he gave Sol a pat on the back with a smile on his face. Sol was unamused as he tried his best to hide his red face behind his hands. You know, because he's such a sunshine. He's sunny. Right. You giggled, looking over to Sol, his bright red face covered by his hand, while looking away. Like a nickname? Yes, Sunny loves the nickname I gave him, right? Sunny? <laughs> Sol didn't say anything. He just looked away and refused to meet your gaze. That's adorable. Hugo was a bit silent. He seemed to be analyzing your face his head tilting slightly to the side before a smile appeared on his face. You sure have taste, Sunny. They are very pretty, like you said. Damn! Way to expose him, Jesus. So, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> so just gave him a dark look, telling him not to even try to go there. A blush escaped your cheeks at the gesture. Hello. What's up? Anyway, nice to meet you. My name's Hugo. I'm Soul's friend. A pleasure to meet you, too. He shakes your hand with a smile on his face. So anyway, what are you up to? I just saw you both and I wanted to greet you. Very simple, you know? Anyway, we're planning to go to the rooftop today and eat lunch there. The weather's doing better unlike yesterday. Wasn't it sunny yesterday? I must be bugging. Do you want to tag along with us? You guys aren't a fan of the cafeteria. There was a food fight yesterday. <laughs> like, because whatever we do in the first day, it doesn't matter. There's always going to be a food fight. Upon mentioning the cafeteria, Sol shivered as Hugo only gave a small chuckle. Sunny isn't a, a huge fan of the noise there. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get going, shall we? Sure. So fun. Hugo walked to his usual spot and got himself seated on a bench that somehow n that you somehow never saw before. What? So followed a large wrapped box in his hands that caught your interest. Sit beside Sol. Sit in between them. Sit beside Hugo. <clears throat> uh, let's get the best of both worlds, shall we? You point to the box nestled in Sol's hands. Is that your lunch? You can say that. Are you about to eat it? I'm gonna guess. You are. Don't play with me. As Sol unwrapped the cloth, it showed you three bento boxes. He takes out the first bento box on top before giving the other one to Hugo. 
Hugo happily accepted the box, uttering a small thank you to Saul, before taking out his chopsticks. Hugo opens the container and lets out an odd sound, mm, his eyes sparkling. Drool slowly drops down at the corner of his lips. You actually listened, and? Did you cut these tiny sausages into octopi? You're supposed to say octopi, I believe. Keep your voice down. It's ringing in my ear. Wait, I need to take a picture of it. Can I see? <laughs> Hugo gently placed the bento box on his lap before rummaging through his phone. He flipped it horizontally and opened his phone's camera. A small click of the camera sound was heard before he placed it down. Hugo took the container back into his hands, but not before turning to you and showing you what he keeps gushing about. <gasps> oh my. I like it. Isn't it adorable? There you see our various ranges of food with rice shaped to match a moth. See, we to design the face along with using the cabbage leaf to form its wings. Right below the moth are many sausages shaped like octopus. Wonderfully cut carrots were made to look like stars and squeezed beside stuffed shiitake mushrooms. This looks beautiful. The egg roll sushi and broccoli. Oh, egg rolls with melted cheese as a dip look delicious. It's a dip. I almost feel too bad to eat it. I'm gonna assume that says... Eat... Uh... Itadakimasu. Mm-hmm. Please let me be right. Yes. <laughs> I used to practice um, hiragana. Without wasting another second, Hugo started digging in. Plus, it's pretty obvious context clues as to what we're doing. Did you make this by yourself? Oh, just say yes. You can say that. <laughs> just say yes. Soul answered, opening his own container. Let's get a peek. Within it just was just a regular ham and cheese sandwich. What? He took what? He took out one piece, but but before he could take a bite, he turned to you. Have you eaten? Uh, let's say no. Cause we haven't. As what I've read so far. Those eyes went wide as Hugo gave you a look. Before you knew it, Soul took out another box, the last bento box, before giving it to you. You can have this, it's an extra. How convenient. Why do you have an extra? I didn't like how this looked, but I figured I can't let Hugo finish it. It's a waste of ingredients. You gave him the first one. You don't really have to, Sol, really. No, I insist. For fuck's sakes, just eat the same box. Alright, calm down. <laughs> Hugo clearly had enough of the back and forth banter suggested before continuing on his box. Sol hesitated at first. He eventually took out a spoon and fork and handed, a, handed out one for me. Take a bite from the bento box. <laughs> Tease him. Um, dang. I would love to do this one, the, this option right here. But Hugo's here, and I don't want to make it awkward, because I hate awkward situations. With a burning passion. But, this is a game. I don't care. You declined his offer of the utensils, making him raise a brow in confusion. You don't want the spoon, or do you prefer chopsticks? Nothing of the sort. Then what is it? I want you to feed me. That nearly took soul out. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's sort of funny though. This is this is better than something else. Hugo gave you a side eye, a judgmental look on his face as he stopped eating. He scooted a bit of away. <laughs> he scooted a bit away from the two of you before returning to his meal. Sol, however, was nervous for a bit. His eyes still transfixed on yours. Still couldn't believe what he just heard. Are you just going to keep staring at them or what? Shut up. No, I'll feed them. Those stripped. No, strips. 
So he gripped the spoon on his hand, taking a few pieces from the bento box before turning to you. His eyes averted away from you, a wild blush on his face as he raised the spoon to your face. His hand was shaking a bit, seemingly nervous. Yeah, get to it, buddy. <laughs> he took a bite and chewed. Mmm, delicious. You feel the flavors mixing well. It was delicious and fresh. It's amazing. So this is really good. Hugo nodded along with you. Food stuffed on one cheek like a hamster. I know, right? You'd honestly be surprised. So, making lunch for Hugo. You'd make a great house husband. This one. <laughs> Gull's eyes widen at your de declaration. You really think so? Yes. I really do think so. Maid dress and everything. Oh shit! <laughs> ah, stop it! Go back. I wanted to see that. Okay. You. Oh shit. I think it said, do you want to get married to me? That's what it said. <laughs> it said, do you want to get married to me? So it's definitely house husband material. He can cook, he can clean, he can do anything. I bet. I'd rather not be your own personal butler. That was a compliment. The two banter, but you couldn't help looking at Sol. His eyes have a hint of sparkle in it. it seems brighter. That would have been like... <laughs> It's so weird to have said. <laughs> you want to get married right now? Whoa, buddy. <laughs> Let's slow down a bit. Okay. I'm glad Hugo interrupted. <laughs> Hugo eventually finished his own box, tucking away the box and wrapping it back up. Hugo stood up from the bench, stretching his limbs. Stretched his limbs. W walked a few steps ahead and looked back at the both of you. Is this what you guys do every day? No. Did you not see what happened yesterday? You questioned, making Hugo turn to you. Or at least when you both get together. What do you mean? You mean Sol giving me lunch? He keeps forgetting to bring his own. Mm-hmm. Hugo pouts. Ow, damn. And you never finish yours, so I do the honors of <laughs> ever finishing good food. Thank you very much. Those bento box art. What inspired them, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, you didn't know? Shut it, go go. Shut it. <laughs> go go. And now you're using the nicknames now, Sunny? How sweet of you. You see here, my old pal here just makes food art like the typical artist that he is. But he never bothers to finish it, much less eat it. And he really loves cute things like... Like... Hugo turned back to Saul. Saul just stared back at him, his arms crossed. What was the name of your plushed horse? Like hell I'm answering that. Boo. He owns a plush horse? Saul owns plushies? Cause it's so shocking. By now Saul's face is beat red as he ties the bento boxes back up. He stood up from his seat before going over to where Hugo was. He stood up as well and followed along the duo. <laughs> I'm still thinking about how he scooted away. <laughs> the side eye. <laughs> That's so cute, you keep surprising me more and more. Mm hmm He said nothing as he fixed his collar. Joker. Same thing. The red going up to his ears as your, at your compliment. Looks can be deceiving. Thank you for that. This begs you to wonder, why do people ever bother- What? Why do people never bother to notice him? Why don't people want to get to know him? They don't say nothing. <laughs> like, maybe they just never gave him the chance because of how he looks. Not to mention his intimidating height. What? Our friend is taller. Kind of. She is tall. I forgot her name. Brittany? <clears throat> I think. But in the end, he he's just a gentle giant. 
Brittany's tall. So. Uh, <laughs> but then Hugo stopped talking, the wind picking up a bit as he went by the railings. He leaned in and placed his elbows on the cold iron surface as he looked down. Curious, you approached him and looked down to where his attention was. And there you see a group of unfamiliar people. They look so fancy. They look rich. Uh oh, dangerous. <laughs> I guess. It doesn't help that the adult with them, you're guessing a teacher, has an eye.
arm, I forgot. Your eyes widen at the words that he, that the well dressed man said. No, I refuse. Oh shit. Go back. I didn't read what the dad said. I thought I told you. Oh. No, you're not taking this farm. My home. <laughs> you cut your father's words off, marching towards the tall man with loud and heavy footsteps. The tall man, however, raised a brow at you, raising his hand to halt his men. His deep magenta eyes then turned to look straight into your eyes. Magenta? It sent a chill down your spine. Well then, little lamb, how about this? If you manage to pay off your debt for the next five years, I'll let you off the hook and let you keep your land. Five years? You can handle that. Bro. Maybe working three jobs would do it for you. Uh, 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 what? He tutted, waving a finger in front of your face. He looks down at you, reminding you of your place. <laughs> Are we in a bedroom? So this isn't allowed. Thank you very much. A mischievous smile appeared on his handsome fe features. Why are we praising this man? But I have some conditions you have to meet. Okay. You went silent. Your heart starts pounding in your chest as you kept eye contact with his sharp magenta orbs. I want you to stay in the city. The city? But we can't even afford to take them to college. What more the city? Your father interrupted. The man's eyes moved sideways to meet his, his figure still fixed on you. No need to worry, they'll be under my jurisdiction, of course. I'll provide for their education and a place to stay. The tall man lets out a laugh, his head thrown a bit back as if he'd just heard a very funny joke. See, I'm not that cruel. Okay. His eyes turn to you. However, in return, I want you to pay off your debt. I don't care what methods. All right, buddy. A dark smile appeared on his face. It sent a shiver down your spine. Legal or illegal? As long as you reach the amount. If not, well, <laughs> you could say goodbye to your little farmland. Hey, dickhead. He says that, but there was a gleam in his eye that is telling you that's not all. But he did not elaborate any further. You bit your lip. You turned to look at your father. Eyes were clearly telling you to decline. There was something about this man that screams dangerous. But you were too desperate not to lose your home. Your only home. I would assume you can't pay off a debt. And I wouldn't think you had multiple homes. What do you say? Tall man's gaze still fixed on you, waiting for your answer. Do you accept? I'm here, so I probably did. You recall the afternoon of your dream this morning, a sour look on your face as you bit your lip. Hugo takes notice of this. He paused for a bit, trying to read your gloomy expression. Let me guess, it's something you can't avoid. I honestly don't know. My father never really disclosed as to why we were in debt. But I was so desperate to not lose my only home. I need to make it up to the higher class, no matter what. Three jobs isn't cutting off the way I want it to be. I'm running out of time. This is my last year in this cursed university, and I'm barely making any progress. Hugo's eyes are still on you. You realize you haven't answered his question yet. My family owns a business. You finally speak, making Hugo perk up his eyebrows in curiosity. What sort of business does your family have? Oh, well, we own a few farms. A few farms? What? <laughs> what? If you have a few farms, that means you have multiple homes. What the heck? Sounds nice. I'd love to be out in the city once in a while. He gave a small smile. Yeah, some might say it's boring, but it's not. You get to pet horses and cows. Yeah. Well, you should really invite Soul over then, if ever. That guy loves horses. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but that means you're a long way from home. Don't you miss it? Um, well, <laughs> he got threatened. So, I don't know. 
petting just horses and cows? I want to see a pig or a chicken or something. Nah. Not really, no. Very independent, I like that. Nice. I heard great things about the city, about the school. Hugo remained quiet, listening to you. Because you went on. If I can manage to come on top and it, and maybe part of the higher class, like you said, admit, then I can maybe save my family's farm. Hugo's arms are now crossed. He didn't say anything as he looked at you. He lets out a chuckle. You remind me of them. Who? Like them? Wh what? Bro? <laughs> I'm rambling. Don't mind me. Bro. Ugh, I don't like the mystery. <laughs> okay? Just. Yeah. Having caught <laughs> red handed, he waved around his hands. His face now red as a cherry as it reached his ears. Just then you felt a presence behind you. Turning around, you're met with Sol. His glare is stinging and directed at Hugo. The short of Mel, however, didn't mind it. Probably used to it. It's almost time. We should head back. All right, all right. With nothing else to do, the three of you left the rooftop. As you were walking down the stairs, however, you felt your foot slip off. You missed a step. Nice. Thankfully, Sol grabbed your waist before you could fall off the stairs as he steadied you. You are right? Yeah, thank you, Sol. Be careful next time. Jeez, the school and its bad architecture. <laughs> also, one of the few flaws here. The stairs are all wonky. It's also why it's forbidden to go up here. We're troublemakers, though. <laughs> Hugo chuckled as he went down the stairs, watching his step as he did so. Sol's arm is still securely around your waist, and it seems like he isn't letting go until you're all you're all on stable ground. We're back. See what my friends were up to. <laughs> uh, the sound of the bell ringing throughout the hallway echoes through, signaling the start of the next classes for some. Hugo groans. I don't want to go to class. I hate my history teacher as much as my archery coach. Ooh, archery. Archery's so cool. Why don't you skip then? Hugo's eyes popped open. It became bright like a light bulb. Just popped out <laughs> on top of his head. So he knows exactly what that look means. Oh. The interruption. Don't... Bro. <laughs> Don't tell what? Don't tell me you're actually- Okay. <clears throat> Wait, who suggested skipping? Oh, okay. Just- <laughs> I'm going to skip class. How about it? F*** the school. If you're gonna treat us badly, then let's be the bad guys. Right. Just give them more of a reason. Hugo said with a mischievous look on his face. Sol just sighed. He then turns to look at you, seemingly waiting for your response. The fuck? The thought of skipping is quite a gamble. Your next class is with... Is... <laughs> skipping, I'm skipping. Your class is with growing art history. Ew, history? You're not even doing it? But then again, your teacher will probably only do some boring ass introduction. Missing one wouldn't hurt, would it? <laughs> I couldn't afford to skip this one. We're gonna skip. Uh, I no. Hugo lets out a small cheer and gives you a thumbs up. So it gives you a cheeky smile of his own. Cause it's not a very great class. But how do we do that though? Obviously we can't go through the entrance since it's closed and guarded. I know a way. I'm mischievous. Without wasting any more time, Sol leads the way, going through the backside of the school near the gardens. The edges, of course, were barricaded by a tall iron fence. Sol finds a bush and pushes it aside, revealing a gaping hole. Well, that's quite convenient. Did you make this hole? He did. Oh, he did. Whoops. I did. Hugo went ahead first through the hole. Sol waits for your first for you first before following right after. 
The three of you went past a few bushes and shrubs, the leaves falling as you passed them. The red and orange leaves scattered around, and some making its way to your uniform, before you all eventually made it out and met with pavement. Nice. So, where do we go? Hugo thought for a moment, looking around before pulling out his phone. Suddenly he let out a gasp, scrolling through his phone faster before gripping on Sol's shoulder, earning him a hiss from the taller male. Sherlock Holmes is out? My ears. Oh yeah, it's, it's that detective movie I keep seeing on the television. Television? I thought that it won't come out till next week. Did I set the date wrong? With that, Hugo started sprinting, leaving you and Sol behind. For the love of- For some Sherlock Holmes. So placed his hand on his hips before walking to where Hugo ran off. Ran off to as he followed. We're gonna watch a movie. Nice. Hugo kept tapping away on his phone. His shoulders went slump. Guess he did that- He did get the date wrong. Shoving his phone back in his pocket, he turned to you and Sol. He clasped his hands together and pulled the biggest puppy eyes you've ever seen. We have got to watch it. Can we? <laughs> Who cares? Like, we got nothing else to do. Hugo begged. You can go ahead and watch the movie. I'm gonna run the arcade while you're at it. Hugo pouted. His eyes went half-lidded and the sparkle in his eyes was gone. But it's more fun if you're around. I know you like those crime videos you watch from time to time, so please. So however, based off his expression, isn't in the mood. Hugo gives up and turns to you. Don't make me choose. Oh my god. How about you? Would you like to watch the movie with me? The ticket and food on me, of course. You've got to be kidding. Just f***ing save. <sighs> I'm gonna go to the arcade. Why would I do- Why? Would I do the other thing? Hugo shrugs. Alright, go on your little impromptu date then. Besides, I don't want- <laughs> I don't want a third wheel anyway. Date? You're the one who decided we should skip class and do whatever we want. Yeah, and I want to watch a movie. Well, don't let me stop you two. Oh, I was like, where the hell did the word go? Hugo stuck out his tongue. Mm-hmm. The said male only rolled his eyes. Well, I'll be heading in now. I'll just give you guys a call when- a call on where to meet. Sure. This guy. <laughs> you and Hugo parted ways. He gave you both away before heading in the- in a different direction. Sol turns to you. Should we get going? Of course. We're just gonna stand here. The flashing neon lights of the arcade's exterior lights your way. The sound of each arcade machine reaching your ears. I've never been here before. Is this place new? Not really, it's just hidden within the city. I see. Do you get out a lot? You seem to know places. I know this because I get my ass dragged by Hugo. Is that so? You laughed. Sol just shrugged as he shook his head. He takes out a few coins from his pocket before handing it to you. They were tokens. So? Which one are you going for first? Wow, you came in prepared. As always. Go back. Come on. <laughs> so holds out his hand and you accepted it. He held in tight held it tight and with a light squeeze as you as you and him roam around the arcade. I can't read. <laughs> You and Sol went and played multiple arcade games. Some you win and some he does. But you often get the feeling he lets you win for the sake of you winning. Come on, this is like the fifth time I won. In no way you're this bad. Maybe you're just that good. <laughs> you flatter me. Just as when you're about to insert another coin, however, you realize you've run out of tokens. Sol takes notice of this and of course gave out some of his um to you. I'll go to the counter and grab a few tokens. You don't mind staying here for a bit, right? How much should I pay you for the tokens? It's on me, don't worry about it. Wait here. Got you. 
giving you one last look, he heard it hurriedly went to the counter. I don't know what games they have in here, but I know that there was this one game that I would play at like David Buster's. It was like, um, it was like a life-size version of like piano tiles. I freaking love that game. I will always play it. And Luigi's Mansion, that one was very fun. Then, and they had like a big claw machine with huge stuffed animals. And there was a dolphin in there one time. And I was like, yo, I really want that dolphin. It was a purple, it was a huge purple dolphin. My dad got it for me, so. Yeah, it was a pretty good day. Pretty good day. But yeah, if there was a piano, a life-size version of piano tiles in here, I'm gonna be there the whole time. And Luigi's Mansion. Definitely. You looked around the area, the uh, dinging sounds from the various machines fill the arcade. From the corner of your eye, you spot your fucking claw machine. <laughs> Maybe playing a few games wouldn't hurt. You better actually get something. Going to the claw machine, you check the contents inside. A cat plushie. A Shiba Inu? That's what my dog is. And a horse. I think we know which one we're gonna get. They all look so cute. Which one should I try to win? Let me think. Get the horse. You remember how Soul likes horses. Maybe you can try to win one for him. These are his tokens after all. If it was up to me then I was alone, I'd probably get, depending on how cute, the Shiba Inu. But I would normally get a cat, right? I don't have like a I have a dog plushie, but it's that fucking dickhead, um, push that from Chainsaw Man. I, the Shiba, though, I would want that. I'd probably do that one. You took out some of the tokens Soul gave you and inserted one in the coin slot. They only cost one? You guys are lucky. <laughs> the machine whirls to life, and you take the joystick on your left hand while hovering the red button on your right. You were focused, eyeing the claw and its position, trying to align it with the horse plush. Please tell me you got it. Whenever I do claw machines, I would like look at it from the front and then I would look at it from the side too, to make sure I get it exactly. It mm -hmm. takes a lot of work, skill. The claw takes hold of the plush, your eyes widen as you cross your fingers, hoping it catches it. You were interrupted with a sudden smack to your ass. What the fuck? What? That is so random. You jerked and turned around? What the fuck? Tall young man, literally kill yourself. What the fuck? That was so random. I hate this already. Oh my gosh. Me over here just trying to get a fucking toy? Jeez. Oh boy. Here we go. Let me mentally prepare myself for this disgusting conversation. Okay. Well, well, well. What do we have here? You turned around and met with a tall figure, a cocky smirk on his face. He looks well off, like the typical spoiled rich kids you see in movies. His hair a bit tussled with two men. You assume are his bodyguards beside him. He reeks of tobacco, making you gag. Nice. You said nothing but tried to move away from his sight, but you were stopped by another tall figure. You were guessing he's with this asshole. Now where do you think you're going there, little sweetheart? Are you alone? Yes, and I would pretty much prefer to be alone. Why didn't we get the choice to say we weren't? I don't understand. The man, however, did not listen. Why don't you come with me and I'll show you how these games are played. Nigga. He raised his hand to reach your shoulders. Before he could touch you, however, you kicked him between his legs. Jackpot. He doubled over and clenched his lower region. A groan escaping his lips. His goons were taken aback and rushed to help him. Now it's my chance. 
What about the fucking plush, bro? We didn't even check if we got it. Don't let them get away. Oh no, I'm so scared. I'm just gonna kick all of you guys in the nards. How about that? Multiple heavy footsteps were coming after you as you ran. You turned every corner you can, trying to make them lose you. But three against one is not a good match. Anyone, please, someone help me. I don't think anybody cares. You pleaded, but the multiple sound effects and music from each machine within the arcade drowns your pleas. You cursed under your breath and you focused on running. All you can think about in the, at the moment is to get out. Oh, there were no bathrooms in there. You managed to get out of the arcade, but you can clearly hear the man and his goons on your tail. For real. Same thing. You looked around and you found a few toilet stalls. Okay, so I was sort of right. You rushed towards it and got into a stall hurriedly. Hurriedly? Yeah. Opening and locking it as soon as you got in. This... The place stinks. STINKS! But you didn't give it another thought as the beating of your heart rings through your ears. Tears filling up the corners of your eyes. You hear footsteps. Find them! No! The man's voice echoed. You started to think of something and you thought of calling Soul. You quickly took out your phone. No signal? In the fucking bathroom? This? What happened? No signal? In the bathroom? Um, We're not at our farm. So what's happening here? Are you for real right now? Apparently. You can hear how aggressive they tore open each stall. They creep closer and closer to where you are. Oh, brother. Anyone, please. Oh my god. Did we say that out loud? Is this a public bathroom? Like, What happened to going to... <laughs> they just went to the girls' bathroom, bro. <laughs> but no, they probably just go right in there. Okay, you are. Please, die. You've been a very bad person, but don't worry. You can make it up to me by doing me a favor. I will be doing nothing of the sort. Fuck you and your favors. I've been kind to you, but it seems you want to do it the hard way. Oh, brother. He forcefully grabs the edge of your uniform. Your eyes went wide as your fingers went cold. You quickly grab hold of his wrist as you try to push him away. Did we not lock the stall? Jeez. He's too strong. Hello? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he forcefully lifts up your uniform, revealing your stomach to him. Take a picture, it'll last longer. You're going to give me a good little... Huh, a good time? Little lamb? Oh, thank you. Boys, hold them down. No. <laughs> Fuck off, let me go. <laughs> you dickhead. The tears that were... God, hanging by finally fell down to your cheeks as you tried to stop him from going any further. The two large men with him held you down as you tried to struggle, but to no avail. Your vision is slowly being blinded by the hot tears that were filling up. It's no use, his grip is too strong, and there is no one near to hear me. You close your eyes shut. Please just end quickly. Nice. <laughs> the one time. Judging from the impact, the man's body was jerked off as you... Jerked off of you as he was thrown to the side. And stabbed? Nice! Double points. You hear flesh hitting flesh. Oh. I thought it was a stab. Another one. One more for good luck. <sighs> Should have stabbed him, bro. Uh oh. That's enough, soul. Not yet. Stab him next. That's enough. You broke his nose already. But, there's always stabbing. Just a nice little shank. Just once. <laughs> no. 
That's enough. Do you need your help? At the mention of your name, the familiar reddish-orange eyes went wide open before turning to you. Someone should have had a knife. Something. I don't know. I would have liked to hear... Shling! Like, once. <laughs> so I quickly went to your side, his eyes wide with shock before crouching down and giving you a hug. How nice. His shoulders shaking as he embraces you. You said nothing, however. Too stunned to speak. To what transpired before you. The man now lay still on the ground, a pool of blood seeping out of him. The rest of his goons passed out on a random corner. From what? Shock? You looked up and met with all too familiar eyes of Hugo. But they weren't the kind ones you usually see on his face. Dang. Hugo's eye twitched at the sight as he sighed, trying to hide his visible irritation. But failing, he looks around at the mess Soul made before turning to check up on you. He said nothing, hands in his pockets while he looks down at you in Soul's embrace. It's getting quite late. We should head home. This probably wouldn't have happened if I stayed the fucking class. But I just wanted to get a freaking uh, horse plush. Excuse the fuck out of me for wanting to get a teddy bear. Damn. Hugo tapped Sol's shoulder, making the tall man, tall male, bray his face further in between your neck, before eventually letting go. I know, bro, I know. It's awful. His eyes were bloodshot, his face red from either anger or worry. You aren't sure, but one thing's for sure is that this man before you cried. He cried for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I should have. I shouldn't have left you. Uh, you were gone for five seconds. Not your fault. It was literally five seconds. Thanks for saving me. Say nothing. Thank you. What are we gonna, we're gonna say? Nothing. You reach out to cup his cheek. He flinches at the touch. <laughs> Tears <laughs> that he was trying to hold back is now flowing freely down his cheeks. He eventually relaxed as he closed his eyes and leaned in on your hand as he held it. I don't know what I'll do if... It's okay. What? It's alright. <laughs> Here. Beside you, Hugo incited his hand for you to take. You notice on his other hand is the same horse plush you try... You try to... <laughs> you try to win back at the crane game. You took Hugo's hand as he helped you get up. Soul stands as, as well, but backs away from you a few steps. We should head back home. It's quite late, all right. Oh, quite late after all. Both you and Soul didn't say anything, but nod along. Hugo gives both of you a smile before walking away. Yes. Mission successful, I don't know. But at what price, I guess. So stupid. Soul kept a firm hold on your head. Hand. Hand. <laughs> Seemingly afraid to let you go. You go lets out a sigh. I guess we can't get that. What? I guess we can't get in that arcade anymore. Those guys might come back to teach us a lesson. Bro. Oh. So after being basically pummeled into the ground, you come back for seconds? Like. Did you like the first knuckle sandwich? What's happening? If they ever come back, I'll give them more than a broken nose. That's what I'm saying. You're pretty scary right now. Good. I'd like to keep it that way. Hugo shakes his head. He rummaged through his pockets before handing Soul something. He didn't quite see what it... Oh, you didn't quite see what it was, but judging on the scowl on Soul's face, he doesn't like it. I told you these don't work anymore. It's because you aren't taking it, fool. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> is is meds i'm guessing so grumbled like a child who got scolded before taking whatever hugo gave him and tucked in his pockets anyway your place is just around the corner you should head back home you should head back as soon as possible i'll be taking d home nice because <clears throat> that's what i wanted those eyes narrowed from holding your hand and wrapping his arm around yours in a possessive hold 
a few leans closer while he's while still glaring at Hugo. No, I can walk them home. Clearly, you're not in a good condition to fight again. I can fight again. There was something in Hugo's eyes that made your blood cold. The usual happy-go-lucky expression he had on his face was gone. Looking back at Sol, he seemed unfazed at it, as if challenging him. Hugo's right. You look beaten up. <laughs> but D, don't stop. At least they know their limits. Sol says nothing but clenches his fist. You notice a few red marks on his knuckles. Your eyes furrowed. I'm fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it tries to reassure you. You shook your head no. Well, for me, you aren't. Bye, Pookie. You look up and give him a reassuring smile. I'll be fine. Besides, I have Hugo to keep me safe. <laughs> you go home first and get some rest. I bet he'll be well rested. After what happened last time. Yeah. Alright. Oh. Can you? <laughs> so wait, before you go. He paused in his tracks. He raised his brow in curiosity. Holding the stuffed toy horse in your arms, you gently hand it over to him, catching him by surprise. Sol, however, shook his head no and gave back the horse to you. His hands wrapped around your hands. I almost was assaulted for this damn horse. And if you don't take it, I'm going to kill you myself. Take the horse. Okay. I was assaulted for this damn horse. So you better take it. You won that. Plus, I don't deserve it. Not after that. No, 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 no. I insist. You better take it right now. But I want it for you. Consider this as your reward for saving me. You better fucking take it. You better take it. I almost had my innocence taken away from me. Take the fucking horse. Sol stares at you in disbelief. From your face to the stuffed horse in your hands. His hands were shaking as he takes the toy horse from, his, from your hands. Brushing your fingers, making him shiver. Thank you. For doing that for me. I'll take care of it, I swear to you. You better. He squeezed your hands, too hesitant to let go, before his hold eventually slipped as he lets go. <clears throat> With that, Sol takes his leave. He walks backwards, his eyes still on you, making sure you're in his sight before properly walking front. You go sighs, and you turn to face him. Well, ain't he a charmer? Is it working? What? You raise a brow at his question. Working what? Charming you, obviously. Don't worry, this is a secret between you and me. Right. He says with a finger on his lips and a wink, you blushed. He's nice. I owe him, I owe him my life after that. And? And? You chuckled, thinking about the long-haired male. He is handsome. I'll admit that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What's with that smirk on your face? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Before you could retaliate with a question, his gaze softened, taking you a bit aback as he looks down at, on the pavement below, kicking a pebble. Have you ever liked someone? No. What's with the sum kidding? <laughs> I'm joking. Clearly. What's with this sudden question? Just answer. Excuse the fuck out of me. Whoa. You paused as you thought for a second, and the first person that appeared in your mind was not Crow. Thank you. I don't know why that was even a discussion. Damn! You thought of Soul. How he protected you. What? How he didn't hesitate to beat those guys down. Physical violence is definitely. Um, the pure terror in his eyes, how worried he was. You couldn't get it out of your head. He's been a, an amazing friend. My god. Get that word out of your vocabulary. Even if he did beat up those guys. And that changes something? Non-stop. Is, is it a red flag? No. Maybe? Do you care? No. 
I mean not. A smile made its way to your face and it was enough to, of a confirmation for Hugo. So stupid. Eventually you arrive at the door of your apartment. You thanked Hugo for accompanying you. He gives you a smile rubbing the back of his head. I'll see you tomorrow. Great. Sorry the day didn't go well. It's okay. But we're going to have a proper plan next time. Of course. Maybe we should have watched that movie. Hugo nodded. He turned his heel, his back facing you, ready to leave. But he remained still in the spawn spot. <clears throat> D? What's up, buddy? Yes? Be careful walking late at night, okay? Got you. You pause, turning your head slightly at him. There's been multiple cases of missing people lately. I suggest you go home with someone. Right. Anyone. Just don't go alone. Imagine I one day go with someone and that ends up being the person who's been kidnapping people. Right. Just don't go alone, right? I understand. Missing people, when did that happen? No, when did it start? Oh, and one last thing. He turned his head around as he looks at your confused face, his eyes soft, but the light against him seems like he's giving you a warning. Take care of soul for me, okay? Got you. And with that, he left. My home. You entered your apartment. The lights dim as you groaned, searching for the light switch. Much better. What is it on the floor? Oh, it's like, it's a plant. Oopsies. <laughs> you nod in approval before heading to your kitchen. Mm -mm. Did we eat? Oh, wait, we had that uh, bento, but... You opened your fridge and started rummaging around for something to eat. You sized nothing good besides the leftovers from yesterday's dinner. You shrugged, deciding to heat this one up after you set your things down. Things down? Done. Set your things done? Down. You didn't really feel like cooking or ordering either. Do you have a microwave? Girl. Come on. <laughs> you sized you closed the door to your fridge as you made your way to your room. Okay. You place your school bag uh, near your desk as you take your seat, skimming through the notes you've taken for the day as you wrote down needed notes. You clicked your tongue as you tapped your blank notebook with the tip of your pen, going on with your silent staring contest. With the blank paper before you, you let out a groan. Deciding to do work later, you closed, the note you closed your notebook and stood up. You turn to your window, noticing it being slightly ajar. That's weird. I thought I closed this. You went near to close it shut, but was met with a new broken lock. You cursed. I thought I already placed this two days ago? Nice. Real nice. You thought I groan as you left it alone and went out of your room and into your living room. Are we not on the third floor? That's that- the room door said three. And there were stairs. So... Somebody, Spider-Man. Like... Your TV blared as you munch on some leftovers you got from the fridge. Cold? A movie currently playing as you kept your eyes on the protagonist. That's a pretty small TV. If you recall correctly, it's one of those films Jess keeps talking about. Starring her favorite lead actor. The guy. You kind of get what she's she was gushing about. The lead does look attractive. Blonde wavy hair with sharp eyes. <laughs> with eyes as pink as fuchsia. Huh. Blonde wavy hair. And you still can't remember the actor's name. You took out your phone and you start to search up the name of the actor when it suddenly changed. And instead of the blonde actor on the screen, a report comes instead with a banner below. Another missing person case. Is this what Hugo was talking about? A shiver went up your spine, remembering the broken lock of your window back in your bedroom. Nah, uh. Not tonight. <laughs> no scary thoughts for tonight. <laughs> Turning off the TV, you went to your kitchen to grab something to drink. You opened your fridge, feeling the cool air hitting your face as you rummaged through. 
If I get jump scared, I'm ending everything. Taking out a pitcher of orange juice? Great choice. You take a glass from the from your cupboards as you pour the juice to the last drop, taking a sip from it. You check the clock on the wall. 9.30. That late already? Dang. You checked your front door and windows, seeing everything locked before grabbing your glass and finishing the last drops of the orange juice before heading back to your bedroom. I figure out how to fix that damn lock. Do something. Now dressed in your nightwear, you let out one last stretch and yawn. Oh, a yawn escaping from your mouth. Getting in your bed sheets, you lay in comfort. Today was a lot, you thought. Another yawn escaped your lips. You must be really tired, you thought, your eyes going half-lidded. And eventually sleep took over. Just end the day. I, I don't want to see anything afterwards. Please. The moon was high up in the sky. The night is quite suave, quiet, safe. Oh, is quiet, safe for a few night cars. But that is not enough to wake the sleeping residents. Oh my god, I said to just end it. You didn't listen to me. Oh my god. Still broken? What are you- Oh my god. You should be careful, pumpkin. Clad in all black, with a mask of the same color adorning his face, he slowly makes his way next to the sleeping figure. His reddish eyes bright, filled with Adoring love. He reached out and, and stroke a finger against his beloved cheek. <laughs> Look at my sleepy sweetheart. Makes me wonder who supplies Hugo with those sleeping pills. What? He lets out a low chuckle as he leans closer to D. You. I gave you pills. What? Pulling down his mask, he leans forward, checking them face, their face, before continuing. Alright, he, he buries his face at the dip of the their shoulders as he leaves a peck. He takes a deep inhale. He shakes as if he took a whiff of a dangerous and addictive drug. Okay. His eyes bright as he examines every feature of his soulmate's face as his... Uh, as he gives these cheek a kiss. <laughs> you smell so good, pardon me. Mm -hmm. He lifted their arm and watched as it flops down on. Deep in sleep, like Sleeping Beauty. Right? He nibbles them. God damn it! He nibbles their neck, earning him a soft whimper from the sleeping individual. He just chuckled. Quite ticklish. Wake up, bitch. <laughs> you can't going and he kept going he kissed and lapped at the same spot uh to the point a, a mark started to form those filthy scums think they could touch you all right his eyes slanted in anger his grip on the edge of the bed tightens as he wrinkles the sheets his breathing heavy for mine no one else you belong to me if I ever see those bastards again, I'll kill them. You should have did it the first time. But, but, I'll let you have what you had that time. Tucking a loose strand away from their face, he gives them a kiss on the forehead before landing another one on the corner of Dee's lips. A shiver ran down his spine at the contact. And as much as he would like to stay a bit longer, this, his time is due. He backs away as he covered his face once again with his face mask. He walked towards the ajar window, turning back one last time. Sorry about your window, I'll make it up to you someday. <laughs> he carefully opens the window again, and with that he's gone. <laughs> Very silly, goofy individual, I would say. Thank you so much for playing the kid in the back day two. Anyways, though, that was the kid in the at the back day two. Um, very nice. I enjoyed it. 
love the the new stuff. You can go in the load menu. Oh, it doesn't do it when you're not saving. Okay. I just like the new interface and stuff. And uh, that one animated picture. But I didn't get all the CGs, so I'm gonna go back and do that on my own time. Um, either way though, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, a like is very much appreciated. And you know, subscribe for any future updates on this game. And with all of that being said, I will see you guys next time.